this episode of Chalk Talk, my friends, we're talking about expanded beams, feral contamination, and fiber fox. And no, this isn't the plot line for yet another superhero movie. <laughs> no, we're talking about the newest advancements in fiber optic technology, which I guess after you install it and impress your bosses and engineering team, might just make you a superhero of sorts. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Fiber optic technology has seen exponential growth over the last couple years. Today, fiber optic technology is finding a place in more and more diverse applications worldwide. In this episode of Chalk Talk, David Kuklinski from Neutrik joins me to explore a revolutionary new kind of fiber optic technology called FiberFox. We take a closer look at the benefits that FiberFox brings to the table, why FiberFox's expanded beam technology makes it unlike any other fiber optic technology on the market today, and how you can use FiberFox in your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Neutrik. Hi, David. Thank you so much for joining me. And thanks for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so we're talking about the Fiber Fox system today. But David, before we dig into the details, what was the motivation behind the creation of this product? Well, adding Fiber Fox to our fiber optic product portfolio, it allowed Neutra to diversify and expand our fiber optic product offerings. With our increasing know-how and experience with expanded beam technology, we welcome the benefits that FiberFox offers our customers. Basically, we offer the reputation Neutrik has in the rugged connector industry to an increasing customer base. Okay, so we've talked about Neutrik's dragonfly connectors in a past chalk talk, but where does this new FiberFox fit into the Neutrik ecosystem? That's a great question. It actually offers another expanded beam or lens technology product in our product portfolio. We started going down the path of expanded beam products with Dragonfly that we introduced in 2019. That is a hybrid system where we combine fiber and power in one connector cable solution. And then we also created Hybrid Med, which does the same thing for the medical industry. And then FiberFox right now is just a fiber optic product that is very rugged. So for specific industries and applications, we now have a much more rugged connector solution for those customers. Okay, that makes sense. Now, David, what kind of sizes are we talking about here? Sure, the FiberFox product line right now comes in two channel or four channel multi-mode solutions. So we have both the cable solutions, we have a bridge chassis connector that we'll talk about later on, and then some adapter products that you can go from the expanded beam world to the physical contact world in fiber optics very easily. Excellent. Now, David, in terms of the cabling of FiberFox, what kind of benefits does it bring to the table? So the FiberFox cable solutions offer a flame retardant bend tolerant cable. So that's really beneficial for really rugged environments. The connectors are really heavy duty. They're IP68, even unprotected. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. The cables are direct prolongable. Basically, you don't need couplers to connect two ends of the cable together. That's because they are a hermaphroditic connection. The cables offer 10,000 mating cycles without any maintenance, and there's no special or maintenance tools required to clean the fiber connectors. They are compatible with all other two-channel and four-channel expanded beam solutions that meet the mil-spec MIL DTL 83526. Okay, so can we also look at the receptacle of the fiber fox? Absolutely. We call it the bridge chassis connector. And again, it does bridge from the expanded beam world to the physical contact world right inside the chassis connector. That's very unique. And it has a lot of other advantages for the marketplace. First, I want to explain that it is compatible with all other cables that meet the mil spec MIL DTL. 83526. So you can plug a non-FiberFox cable connector into our bridge chassis connector. 
The real advantage of this bridge chassis connector, I feel, is that you can easily plug in LC patch cords in the rear of the chassis connector. So this is, allows you to, for a relatively low cost, integrate into your fiber optic environment. And if there's any issue that ever comes up with those fiber optic patch cables, they can easily be swapped out or replaced. The bridge chassis connector goes from the expanded beam world of the FiberFox side to the physical contact world where the LC cables plug into the rear of the chassis connector. It's all done within that chassis connector. The bridge chassis connector is mountable from the rear or the front side. It's IP68, even without a protection cap. And it is based upon our D-size or D-hole cutout, just like Optical Con. So if you, you want to use this product in your existing facility and you already have some D-series connectors that you want to replace with FiberFox, you don't need to re-cut a, a new panel, that sort of thing. You could just easily swap that out. It's extremely service-friendly. If there's ever any damage to those LC patch cords, they're very simple to swap out. Excellent. Now, what about the adapter you mentioned earlier? What does that look like for the FiberFox? So for customers that need to go from various FiberFox connections to optical con connections or go from our four-channel to several two-channel FiberFox connections, we offer these adapters. And basically, there's four of them. Our first one goes from a four-channel FiberFox solution to two two-channel fiber fox chassis connectors all within the adapter. Our second model goes from a four-channel fiber fox solution to two optical con duos. So those are two two-channel physical contact connections. And then our third one goes from a two-channel fiber fox to a optical con duo, which is a two-channel chassis connector. And then the last one goes from a four-channel fiber fox connector to a optical con quad connector. These are really high impact housings that hold these connectors. They offer either IP68 or IP42, depending on the connectors you have in the devices. And they include safety holes and uh, clamps and for getting rigging and things like that. And also the M10 thread at the bottom. So that's a very universal thread that is used in a variety of mounts. These are great adapters to go from four channel fiber fox to a couple of two channel fiber foxes or go from the fiber fox to the physical contact world of optical con. Okay, so we talked about Optical Con in a previous Chalk Talk as well. But David, how does FiberFox compare to that solution? So let me uh, just go over the concept of FiberFox and the expanded beam connector versus Optical Con and other physical contact connectors. On the left of this slide, you'll see a typical multi-mode fiber ferrule. And at the bottom, you'll see the two pieces of fiber physically contact, and that's how they pass light back and forth. The, the pieces of fiber touch each other and pass light back and forth. So on the right side, an example of what the expanded beam fiber fox fiber looks like. First of all, it is substantially larger. It's 3,600 times more larger because what you see at the bottom right is how the connection is made. The two pieces of fiber do not physically touch. They get very close and they have lenses on the end of the ferrules and they shine light back and forth and that's how the signal is passed or the light is passed between the two connectors. So you have a substantially larger surface area and that comes into play when you look at cleaning. So basically in a physical contact environment where you see a dust particle that may block the entire physical contact multi-mode connector, and that's represented in that red dot, it may not even be a factor if that same piece of dust is on the expanded beam connector of FiberFox. You will still receive about 90% of the transmission power in this example. So it's greater surface area with the expanded beam connector and the same amount of dust that may block light and a physical contact connection won't even be a factor, typically, in an expanded beam connection. Now, I know that mating cycles and insertion loss play an important role here as well. So how does FiberFox compare in this case? So basically, what we're looking at on this particular graph is the green line represents a physical contact connector. 
And over time, you will see that because they physically contact, they touch each other, you'll have a little wear and a little increase in insertion loss over time. So basically what we're showing is over time, the insertion loss will get higher and you'll get to a point where at some point you'll need to take that cable or connector and have it replaced or repolished in order to get your insertion levels where you want them to be. The orange line represents the expanded beam connector of FiberFox, and it's constant because we don't physically touch the other connector. The same insertion value is the same across the entire time of mating cycles. And by the way, FiberFox does offer 10,000 mating cycles on the connector. Okay, so what does the performance story look like here in terms of optical specifications? So in terms of optical specifications, we have insertion loss values on the cable of 0.7 dB a connector, and on the chassis, it is typically 0.9 dB a connector. It operates in the wavelengths of 850 to 1300 nanometers. Operating temperatures are minus 40 degrees Celsius to plus 70 degrees Celsius, so that's a wide range of temperatures that the connector can handle. It is hermaphroditic in its gender, meaning that there's no male-female, so they can easily take two cable connectors and put them together. And it is compatible with WDM, or Wave Division Multiplexing Technologies. So, David, what about the mechanical performance? So the mechanical performance of the FiberFox cables is such that, first of all, we have a mating cycles performance of 10,000 mating cycles. It is IP68, either mated or unmated, and even with the dust cap off. And so why is that important? Let's just say you're dragging a FiberFox cable across a field and it happens to dip into a puddle of water, you don't need to worry about that. That water is in the connector. You can easily wipe it off, blow it out with some compressed air, and still make the connection not have to worry about it. The water will not get inside the connector and contaminate the connector. The connector is very rugged, and we have done some free fall testing where we've done 500 falls at 1.2 meters in height. We've done some extensive bump testing and have great results with those tests. The cable jacket itself is flame retardant and bend optimized. It's a really good cable design, as well as the connector boot is a really well-designed product. Most importantly, compatible with all other connectors and cables that meet that mil-spec MIL DTL83526. So are there any other interesting details included in the FiberFox solution? Yeah, so as I mentioned, um, one of the unique features is the fact that it is IP68 up to six meters in water depth for 30 minutes, even without the protective cap. That's a big advantage over the competitors that are on the marketplace. That constant insertion loss value, you don't have to worry about uh, your signal strengths uh, degrading over time. Very easy to clean. Basically, you can either use water to clean the connector. You could use compressed or canned air or, geez, you could even wipe it on your shirt to clean it off. It's really insensitive to dirt and liquid and dust contaminants. As you saw from that previous slide, a small piece of dust doesn't usually affect the performance of the light being transmitted. It's hermaphroditic, so it's easy to extend cable lengths. You don't have to have adapters, couplers. The two and four channel connectors are compatible. And what I mean by that is if I have a four channel FiberFox cable, I could plug it into a two channel FiberFox cable and the signals will pass. Now, obviously not all four channels will pass onto the two channel, but the two two channel fiber signals will pass back and forth. Also, the ease of integration with the bridge chassis connectors with LC connections is a big plus. And again, we're compatible with that mil spec that I've talked about previously. Excellent. Now, going back to the optical con we discussed earlier, how does FiberFox compare to the optical con advanced? So this is um, something that I wanted to bring up because it is important for customers to determine what their needs are. And although FiberFox is a great technology, there are some differences of the optical kind of advanced technology. And let me go through that. First of all, the technology itself is one is expanded beam and one is physical contact. 
Optical Con Advance is a male-to-male -male system, so if you do want to connect two cables together, you will need an adapter where the gender of FiberFox is hermaphroditic and you just plug one into the other. Right now, FiberFox is multi-mode only, Advance is multi-mode and single mode. The insertion loss values are a little greater with expanded beam technologies versus the physical contact connections of Optical Con Advanced. Optical Con Advanced is a push-pull technology from a connector plugging and unplugging perspective, where FiberFox, you screw the connector on. So that is real important in super rugged outdoor environments. Customers may want that type of connection. FiberFox is two and four channels, and Advance goes all the way up to 24 fiber channels. Both are D-series cutouts or D-shaped cutouts. FiberFox is uh, lens technology, so it offers the advantage of ease of cleaning, where on the Advanced solution, we do have the shutter system. There's a better IP protection rating on FiberFox with it being IP68. And from a cleaning perspective, it's really much easier to clean FiberFox than it is with Optical Con Advanced or any other physical contact solution. So as we compare FiberFox to Optical Con Advanced, there is greater insertion loss with expanded beam technology. So usually three to four connections, so to speak, you'll still have adequate insertion values where the physical contact cables of Optical Con Advanced, you could have many more connections and not have to worry about significant insertion loss. On the expanded beam product, you don't need any kind of scopes or any special cleaning materials. It's really just water or canned air and away you go. Okay, so David, can we take a closer look at the construction of these two solutions? Absolutely. So when I talk about insertion loss being greater in an expanded beam cable solution, we have here an example of FiberFox at the top and optical kind of advance at the bottom. And it's basically, we'll say it's the same system, but only the cables are different. And so the reason I we have this is to show you that the same solution, the same length of cable, etc. you will see that the expanded beam solution has greater insertion loss of 25 dB versus 1.25 dB on the optical con advanced cable. So again, customers, if you have a lot of connections, say if you have a need to you know, connect six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 cables together, you may want to look at the optical con advanced solution because you'll have less insertion loss overall. But for the most part, the FiberFox solution is usually um, adequate at two or three or four connections in, in terms of insertion loss values. Okay, so you mentioned compatibility earlier. Can we take a closer look at that aspect of the FiberFox? Absolutely. These are some other expanded beam products that are on the marketplace. Any connector that meets the MIL spec MIL DTL 83526 we are compatible with, and they are compatible with us. So you could take one of these competitor cables and plug it into our bridge chassis connector. So if you already have some of these cables, it's easy to add on FiberFox and still use your existing cables as you also purchase new FiberFox cables. So you can plug those into the bridge chassis connector or our adapters, and they'll have no compatibility problems. So... How does the FiberFox compare with those other solutions you mentioned? Well, as we look at the competition in the marketplace, again, we have that IP68 rating of six meters in depth for 30 minutes, even unprotected with the protection cap off. We have a greater mating cycle of 10,000 mating cycles. Our cable is a much better design cable than most of the competitors out there. We have a better strain relief. And the fact that we are a D-shaped cutout on our bridge chassis connector with the ability to just plug in standard LC patch cables, that's a huge advantage over a lot of other products. That also helps with serviceability later. So overall, we feel that FiberFox is the best price performance expanded beam solution on the marketplace. So David, what kind of markets is the FiberFox a good fit for? FiberFox is uh, used in a variety of markets. We have some here that I'll go over where we see the FiberFox solution deployed. The lighting and network solutions that are found in concerts and touring uses a lot of FiberFox going from the back of stage to the front of stage. 
Also in the PA market, the same applications going from the back of the mixing console to the front of the stage, incorporating a variety of signals. Broadcast video and pro AV video, there's a lot of use of FiberFox. Also, defense and government uses a significant amount of this product where they are connecting mobile vehicles, say, to transmission towers, radio antennas, that sort of thing. In the railroad marketplace, we see FiberFox cables used where they're connecting cars within a, an entire train length. So they're handling communication signals, internet signals, that sort of thing over the fiber fox cable assemblies. And then the oil and gas and windmill industries, like signals and control go over the fiber fox assemblies for these solutions. Okay, so what kind of traction have you seen with the fiber fox? We have um, a number of existing OEM customers and a growing number of OEM customers that are deploying FiberFox on their products. Companies like Yamaha and others use the bridge chassis connectors on their audio mixers and other products just because it's easy to integrate. It's smaller in size with that D-shaped cutout. And so this group of OEM customers is continuing to expand. Excellent. Now, David, can we chat about some potential applications for FiberFox? Absolutely. We're showing some fixed installation sites here, including music venues, stadiums, and concert halls. On touring and events, a lot of FiberFox is used at large outdoor music festivals. In fact, there was just one in uh, Columbia, South America this spring where they used a significant amount of FiberFox uh, cables on that concert tour. We're seeing a significant amount of FiberFox used right now as there is an increase in concerts and entertainment tours throughout the Americas. That is super cool. All right, David, I think it's almost time to wrap up. So can you give me your main points? Absolutely. FiberFox is compatible with all other expanded beam cables and connectors that meet the bill spec MIL DTL 83526. Existing cables or existing chassis connectors, you can certainly use FiberFox products and connect into those environments. The ease of integration into a customer's environment using the standard patch cables is a huge plus. You use off-the-shelf LC patch cables to go from the bridge chassis connector into your environment easily. IP68 waterproof um, up to six meters in depth without that protection cap is a big plus. Because of the expanded beam technology, we're highly resistant to dirt, dust, and liquids. It's very easy to clean, and no special tools are required. Also, we talked about the constant insertion loss value. There's no variation in signal strength over time. It's a hermaphroditic interconnection to extend your cable lengths. Two and four channel cables and connectors are compatible with each other. FiberFox cables, by the way, are available in any length on a cable reel or air spooled. The cables are assembled here in the U.S. with great delivery timeframes. Contact Neutrik for more information or visit our website at neutrik.us. Excellent. Well, David, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Neutrik. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or check out YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.